Hey everyone, Board Game Brody here with Meeple Mountain. I have a review copy of Darwin's Journey, a new, highly anticipated Euro game by Thundergriff Games. Darwin's Journey is a worker placement Euro game. Players will be recalling Charles Darwin's memories of his adventure through the Galapagos Islands, which contributed to the development of his theory of evolution. With an innovative worker progression system, each worker will have to study the disciplines that are a prerequisite to perform several actions in the game. Actions include exploration, correspondence, gathering and dispatching repertoires found in the island to museums in order to contribute to the human knowledge of biology. The game lasts five rounds with several short and long-term objectives for you to complete. Every single action you take will grant you victory points in different ways. The tension and the strategic planning that increases over the duration of the game and the fascinating vibe that the game conveys makes Darwin's Journey something that you need to check out. The game is for 1-4 to four players and the time to play is 30 minutes per player and is recommended for 14 and up. The game has a Board Game Geek complexity rating of 3.5 out of 5, but the game seems pretty easy to learn. I'd expect that after one full playthrough, all players will know how the game works. But the game isn't just good because of its complexity, it's good because you can learn the game fairly quickly. But there are so many choices and planning when to do each action is important in the game, and all those decisions will translate to either a couple of points or a lot of points. Thundergriff has released information on its many mechanisms used in the game, including worker progression, but most of the actions that can be performed are bound to requirements that your workers can learn by attending the academy. The more complex the action, the more difficult the necessary requirements will be. There are four different types of wax seals that can be assigned to workers that are linked to the main actions in the game. Exploration, Navigation, Correspondence, and Learning. Expanding the knowledge of all your workers will also grant victory points and increase bonuses when performing actions. One of the main actions your workers will perform is exploring the Galapagos by advancing your explorers in one of the different islands. The first island is unlocked immediately at the beginning of the game, while the second and the third will be bound to how far your ship advances with the navigation. On the islands, your explorers will find three different types of events. They will be finding repertoires, placing tents, and receiving bonuses. By exploring the island and navigating through the ocean, you will find new species and take notes to their discoveries. Once you are ready to share your discoveries with the world, you will be able to send those repertoires to the museum by placing your worker in the corresponding field of the game board. Money is definitely the most difficult element to manage in the game, but will drastically improve the tempo and the quantity of workers used to accomplish a long-term strategy. And only one player can send a unique repertoire to the museum, and by doing so they will get two different types of benefits, coins, or money, and evolution points that will score points at the end of the game. Another type of mechanism that really opens up the game is the navigation, which not only is fundamental to reach more interesting islands with your explorers, but also because it will create a tense race to complete each turn's objective. During the game, there are five objectives, one for each round, that will immediately set short-term strategies for the round. By performing a navigation action, players will be able to advance their ship to discover new repertoires, finding places for camping ashore, and avoid point deduction when your ship doesn't keep the pace of the beagle that is advancing as well. Correspondence changes each game, and it is a competition of who will get the reward because the first and the second player to hold the majority in each round will have special end-of-round bonuses. By performing a correspondence action, players will be able to place their own stamps on one of the envelopes. Also, by emptying one of the stamp columns on your player board, players will be able to immediately obtain bonuses that will allow them to create action chains during the game. By visiting the corresponding diary, players will be able to pay the cost of any locked action in order to make it available to everyone else. By doing this, the player will immediately perform the unlocked action for free without the need of a worker or to meet the requirements of that specific action. These actions will give access to a variety of things such as placing tents, drawing and immediately completing objectives, or using locked actions in the game. 
We've talked about some short-term objectives, but personal objectives and crew cards will definitely need a bit more thought and time to be completed during the game. Each objective tile and crew card has specific requirements listed on them. Players will fulfill any objective tile or crew card in their personal area at any point during their turn or during the reward phase as long as the listed requirements are met. Overall, it looks like Thunder Griff has been working hard to give us a wonderful game for 2021. This game is on the top of my list for games coming out in 2021, and I hope now you have a good idea of what this game can offer you. So, travel throughout the Galapagos, find a new species with your family and friends in Darwin's Journey by Thunder Griff Games. Again, this is Board Game Brody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.